afternoon to everyone and assalamualaikum. We are in training or workshop 3, 23rd February 2001. So our session will start at 2 p.m. Uh, until 4 p.m. Okay. Uh, I would like to invite. Okay, there will be two speakers for today. Okay, the first one will be Mr. Ali Imran Mohammad Nordin from Major Fact Check. Uh, his topic will be about creative. The title of his topic will be Creative Tools and Ways in Teaching Media and Information Literacy for University Student. Next up after him uh, will be uh, wait. Uh, Associate Professor Dr. Irma, Emma Mirzawati Muhammad, aka Dr. Irma, and she will be delivering a speech on producing media content for assignment, creative modules for university students. Okay, before I leave the floor to Mr. Imran, I would like to just highlight uh, some information about him. Okay, um, biography. Okay. Eh, alamak. Okay, no, there's a text here. I read the text first. Okay, sorry. Okay. Assalamualaikum and greeting to all. Welcome to UKM UNESCO training on media information literacy for academics. This training is organized by the Empowerment of Media Literacy and Digital Content Research Cluster, mentioned FSSK UKM. Okay, let's start with our first speaker, biography, Mr. Ali Imran Muhammad Nodin. Okay, uh, jumping into the world of journalism 10 years ago from the field of logistics, Imran personally has an interest in serving society to fight the spread of false information. If he used to use the personal platform of public journalists, now he does this effort full time. Mr. Imran is involved in the process of setting up fact checking efforts at Bernama, which started in early 2020. And in August 2020, the MyCheck Malaysia portal started operating live. Improvement effort made by him to ensure MyCheck operation is in best quality performance. Having an advanced diploma in logistics from the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport, Mr. Imran is pursuing a bachelor degree at the local university. Apart from checking facts, he is also interested in topics related to history theology and agriculture okay without further ado ladies and gentlemen i will i would like to hand the session to mr ali imran muhammad nondin from my check Malaysia to deliver his content with the title creative tools and ways in teaching media information literacy for university students the floor is yours mr imran Okay, Jay, thank you so much for the kind introduction. I would like to check if you guys can see my screen. Yes, yes. Yes, we can. Okay, cool. Awesome. Okay, um, let me just do this again. Um, let's do this in a fun way. That is, uh, let's do this with interactions. Um, feel free to <clears throat> jump in whenever you have questions. So, I have 45 minutes. The first session that yes. I conducted, yeah. I basically overrun my time. So I will try to not do it again this time. So everyone, my name is Imran, and this is the slot on creative, creative tools and ways in teaching MIL for university students. Um, let's go first. My name, uh, as, as uh, mentioned earlier, I am, I've been with Benama for the past 10 years, and we have embarked into uh, fact checking efforts starting March last year. And um, this has been a great honor to speak uh, to educators because we, since day one, have been wanting to cooperate with uh, universities, institutions, or uh, any NGOs that wish to basically help uh, society in Malaysia to empower themselves to understand the challenge that we are facing today with influx of information. Uh, enough about myself, uh, My Check Malaysia is basically a fact-checking um, initiative. We use this website to deliver our content um, just to give you a live uh, basically look about how the website is. 
So this is the website. We you can find everything about us on this tentang kami operasi and penarafan uh, tab. Uh, we use Malay con Malay language for the time being. Um, very simple reason. We don't have enough manpower to go for the for Dubai language. So we started with Malay and English content, but we have to scale down to only Malay for the time being. Hopefully, we can gain our our strength again, and we can start producing in Malay and English again, and hopefully in other languages like such as uh, Mandarin, uh, Tamil, because our most important uh, uh, audience is Malaysians. So website, so our con we have um, our report uh, being laid out, and we do reports basically um, very much. We try as much as possible to uh, attain to Malaysia context. Um, of course, there's a lot of misinformation spreading around the world, but we are trying to cater to our country, Malaysia. Um, the same being uh, because if some for 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 a misinformation that have spread throughout or basically cross border potential of having other fact checking organization to look at it is very high but if you're talking about malaysia uh, we don't really have uh, we it's not we don't really have we do have effort but we need more people to do so so that's why that's and that's where my check come into the picture so that's us um tentang kami and everything so we have uh, four members right now. We have myself, Erwan, Suzy, and Najisha. Um, Erwan is with me in this session, and Suzy too. They would like to jump into the camera, but I said no because you will take too much space. So no, stay there. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's basically about my check. We we can talk about my check more later uh, because uh, we want. I want to ensure that I manage to finish all my slides first before. I basically commit to another um, over the time, over the limit again. So let's go to um, our timeline. Um, just, um, this is what we have done since last year, quarter one, we had training session. And the highlight of what we had um, done for the past, what, see, see 11 months was um, we, we managed to get a Google, Google News Initiative to come to our building and conduct a live training, following by our, our own um, self-organized training with uh, IPTA, talking about uh, combating fake news. And it was an honor for us when we attended Asia Pacific Trusted Media Summit last year, uh, we were mentioned um, by in the country, in the Malaysia country report, and from that moment, we were, we were getting known because prior to that, we were just trying to do things on our own. We we're trying to fix it. And that, you know, when you build a website, it's not as easy as, you know, posting something on Facebook. So tweaking here and there, and yeah, we, now we are ready. So um, I told you that, I, I shared with you that we are not alone. We have Sabarangi Ramai, an initiative by MCMC. We do have AFP, Semakan Fakta, and we are very happy to welcome our, our wonderful friend from the Fact Check Lab uh, that has operated. And that even day to day, today they have published another report. So um, in Malaysia, by far, we can have, I can safely say we have four um, initiatives talking about uh, debunking misinformation alone. So, um, so, and there's more to come. I hope there'll be more people and more organizations willing to come and uh, talk about, uh, you know, fact checking. Now let's go to the content. Okay, um, categories of information uh, disorder. I would suggest everyone that attend this session today to purchase or to get or to download this book. Journalism, fake news, and disinformation. Uh, it's, an, or it's a publication by UNESCO. Um, you can download it online. I can share with you the link later. Um, it's free, um, but I cannot get the whole to the original 
conversion yet because uh, I, I requested them in Jakarta to post it to me, but not yet. Uh, maybe after MCO in both countries, then we can start, I, I can, I can re-request the original copy. So even for myself, I printed it and you see a normal for the state copy that I use, but the book content is wonderful. Uh, it basically helps you in understanding misinformation and in fact, it will help you with um, techniques and also some tools that you can use in order to uh, educate public, even yourself and your public on misinformation. So yeah, do this and hopefully uh, it will be beneficial for everyone. So according to this book, according to a uh, contribution by first draft, there are seven types of mis and disinformation. How do we get to mis and disinformation? Because uh, it's a degree, the degree of um, harm that can be uh, caused by a content. So certain misinformation or certain information spread online, just for the sake of having fun, you know, they, they, didn't, they didn't mean to harm anyone, they didn't mean to basically, you know, uh, cause any uh, chaos or trauma to anyone, but there are parties around this basically country, um, yeah, but love to produce and spread content that will create harm to the public and also will create misunderstanding. So according to first draft, they have seven, they have basically segregated uh, mis and disinformation into seven uh, categories. Number one is satire or parody. Um, normally, I'm talking about normally, organization or parties that did satire, they didn't mean to cause any harm. You just feel like, you know, fooling someone, just making jokes, you know. Um, but in Malaysia, we do have people that use satire um, for the sake of political tool or for sake of their own benefit or, you know, dismay the other party. So that's why it's, it's quite interesting um, for us as fact checker, how do we categorize contents? So let's go through with this one first, then we'll talk about, we, we will have some exercise later. Okay, misleading content is, as, as mentioned here, um, to frame or an issue or individual. So it's just that. Uh, imposter content is when genuine sources are impersonated. So, um, you know, okay, we'll talk about this later. Yeah, but um, we do have um, um, Twitter accounts um, that, that use a certain organization's name, real name, but they, they are not the original, con not the original account for the organization or, or person. And they posted a lot of stuff and it seemed to be from that person. Uh, fabricated content, we'll talk about imposter content later, yeah? So fabricated content, false connection. Yeah? Fabricated content is where the content was purely created uh, to deceive and do harm. And when you talk about false connection, false contacts and manipulated content, for, even for myself, it's quite challenging to differentiate between these three because sometimes it's, it looks similar. It can look, you know, it, it might look uh, basically same, but it can fall into any of these categories. So for today, just remember these seven categories first, satire, uh, misleading, imposter, fabricated, false, a connection, false contacts, and manipulated content. So what we will do today is um, we will do some uh, exercise where let's uh, where I will show you photo, and I want everyone everyone in this room in this in this session to participate. Either you can unmute yourself and answer, or you can also write your answer in the chat. Uh, uh, using the chat application. So I will show one by one and you tell me what do you think it is. So let's go with the first um, picture. And you can see over here the categories is here. So you, you do, 
even if you didn't remember, you didn't remember the seven as I is in as uh, showed in the previous slide. Look here, and you can refer to it. So the first one, let's look at this. Yeah, look at the title. Look at the layout. You know, is it convincing enough for you? And what do you think it is? Empist shock as Lee Guan Eng makes rookie mistake of not asking for bribes to middlemen. And you have LGE and Najib Razak sitting side by side. So what do you think it is? Okay, let's go guys. Give some answers. It's okay. It's not going to... It's not going to do harm. Not I'm not going to eat you guys. Um, yeah. Yep. I'm far I'm away. Not, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Any it's a it's a, it's a uh it's a parody actually. Okay, okay. Who's that? Who's that? There's it's a professor. Jam here. Oh, yeah. Doctor Jam. Okay. Doctor Jam, you attended the previous session. <laughs> but you did like, not no, give uh uh Mister Imran, you did not give the answer. You said it can be any, but for oh, me okay, it's okay. a parody. Okay. okay, for you it's a parody. So no, so Alan Bocho is parody. Tak per tak per. Tak bila pecah dah sih saya. So uh, Dr. Lina says misleading. Okay, uh, anyone else? Uh, maybe Dr. James says it's a parody, but how can it be parody? It looks very convincing. convincing. Yes. Yeah, it looks like a news, you know? It looks like uh, a... It had, it had the, the font that they use, had, they have it, ads, you know? It has ads on the right side. Yeah. Uh, it has all the features of the news. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but so, the style okay. is, is a parody for me. Okay. Because because in parody you have uh, a subject that you parody. Yes. Yeah, so okay. Yeah, so. Okay. Let's take a look at this one. What's your take? Okay, Dr. Jam. Tada. Open it, test it's positive a for false, coronavirus. False connection. It's a false connection. <laughs> yeah, I think. Okay. It could it could be true. <laughs> it could be true. Okay, you know what? This so is anyone, a photo. Anyone? This is anyone a photo else? taken from uh, Upin circumcision session <laughs> in one of the episodes. Um, yes, Dr. Jan, you are correct. This is basically parody because this mm. has been produced. This was produced by a portal called the Tapi Times. The Tapi Times. Yeah. The Tapi Times uh, has been around for quite a while. I'm talking about, about years, eh? minimum three years, like, three, four years, eh? even before all of this you know, parody Twitter account has been around. So they have been producing. It's a one-man show. Um, and they and this person loves to create jokes. So he created the Tapi Times and he do, uh, you know, uh, uh, parody uh, articles. But, you know, he put it in such a convincing way. That if you if you browse the the website, you feel like okay, this is this looks really like a news, you know, organization. And I even had an experience where people came to me and showed me article. Uh, they forwarded me uh, via WhatsApp an article by Tapi Times, and they took it for real. So yeah. Sometimes when you are in the platform, you are okay. But the moment the content being taken out of the platform, especially when you have a, in WhatsApp where you can on, you see and you can read the title prior getting into the article, so people can have judgment there and they just forward it. You know, not everyone will read the whole content or the whole article. So that's that. Okay, what is this? Astrol Alwatni, what do you think? Is it a real news website or new news uh, Twitter account? Uh, hi. It's again, another parody. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay, you have another parody and you have, oops, sorry, and you have this one. What is this? What do you think it is? It says there, Sumba Berita parody. Yeah. yeah, but look at look at the type, look at the name, and look at the logo. It can be imposed in that sense. Uh, do you think it looks like an official news house? Yeah, one of the official news houses in this country called Bernama. 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 Yeah, yeah. 
You see, not everyone remember how Bernama logo looks like. So when you have a, a, a box, blue color with B inside, not everyone will look at the caption and say, oh, oh. And especially when the content is taken out of the Twitter platform, yeah? when the content taken out of Twitter platform, then um, people might mistook it as something else. Let's take, let's take a look at this one. This is a website um, where you can create um, so-called breaking news using your own photo. Um, I don't really expect anyone to answer on this. I just want to explain that um, for me, people have been using this website to create uh, fabricated content. Okay, because they, they can just put a photo and they just put any so-called headline that they like even though the website has basically secured themselves man, by saying this app is intended for fun, humor, and parody. Be careful what you make and how it may be shared. Even though the, organ the, the creator of the website have secured themselves, but I don't think the users are following what being, uh, basically you know, um, mentioned over there. So that's that. Let's look at this one. This is a Malaysia case, I'm TV original. I'll tell you this is a real photo with no, you know, no, no editing. So what do you think it is? What do you think happened in this photo? Uh, hi, I'm Hajar from UITM. Hi. I think the, the head is belong to someone else, not uh, the ladies with the glasses near tangan do. Okay. What happened that gambar tu, uh, dia punya perspektif dia macam tu lah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ada. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone agree or disagree with Ada? I cannot answer because I know the answer already. So. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Dr. Jan, thank you. <laughs> okay. You know what happened? Uh, this is a, a friend of mine, basically. She's from U Tucson, if I'm not mistaken. Tucson or Cosmo, if I'm not mistaken. So she she was, in, for your information, she was uh, she was pregnant at this moment, at this point when the photo was taken. Uh, she had to find a space where she didn't have to crowd herself with other reporters uh, to, to, to hear. Uh, from the subject in this particular case, Kunan, huh? when he was still a um, federal territory minister. So she was standing there and listening to Kunan. And yes, Kohada was correct. The hand was not hers. The hand was, the hand belonged to somebody else. It just, in a way, looked like she was, you know, lying herself behind. Uh, back to back to Kunan, no, no, it, it doesn't, it didn't, it didn't as it looks. So, yeah, in in one glance, in one glance, you might, you might feel like, oh, apa lah budak perempuan ni, malu lah. You know, mengada-ngada reporter, because that's what happened. Eh? Um, this photo went online and people basically went berserk and accused her by, you know, being manja uh, to Kunan. So, Pity her and, and imagine eh, she was pregnant, busy, I don't know, tired, coming back from work and she found out the thing burst online and she has nothing to do with all the, all the accusations. So let's take a look at this one. We have an article and uh, in a WhatsApp with, a, with a lines with lines of caption. Quote red warning to all Malaysians, blah blah blah, stay away from Mama Shop. So, what do you think it is? In which category does it fall? Anyone? Anyone? Anyone here, please? You know, okay. you can, you know, just give your answers. I'm not going to eat you or bite you. <laughs> Okay, so no answer for time being. Okay, <laughs> they're worry, shy. No. I think they're shy. Cool, cool. Don't worry. <laughs> so what happened was, uh, this is basically, in my opinion, it is a false connection. 
and it can also be a false context because the article was correct. The article was um, produced by Malaysia Kini. This was during the early part of the um, COVID-19 uh, MCO, talking about say month of May, June, somewhere around there. So the, the, con the, the article was correct, being put in a WhatsApp platform and been uh, been 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 what uh, flourish by a warning. This one is wrong, but the the news attached to it is correct. So I call this as um, false connection. So let's go and let's see what else do we have. Okay. Okay, this is kind of you know popular about one two months back, one month back. So what do you think is this? Anyone? Okay. No answer, no answer. Okay. Uh, just, just trying my life. I think it's a manipulated content. You think it's a manipulated content? Okay, okay. Okay. Anyone else? Have Have you guys, have anyone in this session probably ever, uh, you know, received this earlier? Has, has it, you know, been, been received in your WhatsApp or anything? Hmm. Oh, I like it, like this oh, group. No, maybe, maybe, maybe no, not in WhatsApp group, but you know, on Facebook timeline. Okay. You know, sometimes they share. Misleading, okay. yeah. misleading. Okay, uh, we we did check on this. Huh? Um, this is our article on um uh on 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 the photo. So it was basically uh it, 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 it's a fake. It's a fake uh, photo. I I put this as um, fabricated content. Yeah. Fabricated. So yeah. So okay. Where where did my okay? So I put this as, as fabricated content, and um, we did check, and we can find. Uh, using uh, image, search, image search that the photo was taken from somewhere else and the title was taken uh, was being basically uh, created by whoever that feels that doing it lah. so yeah that, that's what happened and this is the is this last one yeah this is the last one so you have the star reporting government to allow interstate travel in January 27 this was when we were still having a MCO um, PKP, which uh, disallow anyone to go cross border. Um, this this was the real title. Eh? So what we found that uh, what we found later was because we did check on these two, and this was what happened. They started with this title, and what happened later? They changed the title because I think what it, it backlashed. You know, people st started complaining in their social media platform, blah, blah, blah. And they changed it to this one. Interstate travel allowed for married couples living apart starting January 7. So this is in a better context. So still, um, even, you know, uh, official news house can, a mainstream news house can, you know, fall into some mistake. And because people nowadays can simply screenshot and share things, uh, it makes it harder for for you to basically uh, stop, you know, uh, the content from distribute. So, but yeah, that, that's why we are here. We are we are doing our very best to explain, and we did a, a thorough check. And we even went to other news uh, websites and 
shared how the other news houses um, put their title just to give a better context to the readers. And we even put our um, references. This is our, this is our house style in my chat. So that is that. Um, okay. That is about <clears throat> the seven category. Let's go into logic. For me, logic is the important uh, skill in fact checking, the most important skill in fact checking. Uh, you have to start asking questions, change, you have to challenge the content that you receive. Um, you, you do not I mean, do not succumb to the idea that, oh, this comes from official source, must be true. Lah. So no, um, we have seen just now, even the star can stumble themselves. Of course, they repented, but yeah, the damage is done. So uh, keep questioning yourself. Uh, in today's era where uh, everybody's uh, tracking for traffic, you know, some even news houses um, started to use clickbait titles. It can mislead people to understand differently. So always ask yourself and use your eye very, very uh, sharply. You have to look at any potential uh, or any potential uh, flaw in the content that you receive, especially today when you receive, or uh, not only you, but everyone receive many of our content in either video or photo. Uh, and even if it is in, in text, uh, the title can be misleading. So um, let's try this one. Um, there's this um, screenshot. This was in 2018, yeah, 2018. Uh, Astro Awani reported to produce this article and uh, we do not know um, if it is true. So what do you think? What do you think? It is true? Is, is, is this true? No? Anyone in the chat room just say yes or no? Mm, not sure, but you know, not sure. I think I think if it's, you know, uh, lalu dekat timeline Facebook, the people will share it. You know, yeah. convincing, you know, it looks convincing, right? Okay, just uh, to respect the time, look at this one. It has been debunked by Astro Awani himself, mm. and his, it was also been debunked by Sebrenado Omai. So, what happened? You say, you say, for example, if you don't have Astro Awani or Sebrenado Omai, maybe they have yet to produce the article, maybe you receive these in the early uh, one of the early receivers of the content. So this is what I did in 2018. This was before my chat was formed. Uh, this was on my personal Facebook platform, and I did this. Mm. There are a lot of flaws in this photo. You can see the inconsistency between the size of caption. You can see the wrong, uh, you know, use of you know uh, grammatical error. You can see the different, the wrong use of uh, spelling. No, so these are things that can give you some hint that this kept, this photo might not be true. And when I posted this on my Facebook, I was very lucky because I think people was uh, interested and people were interested, and I received say around about one thousand five hundred like a response, you know, a share like and things like that. So people do want to know. It is just how do you present it to them. So that's very important. So this is this was basically totally using uh, my Note 5 pen, you know, just scribble on the screen while I was doing. I was on I was on other assignment. I was I was on the field, but I was I still had some time, so I just do it. So you can you can do it on your own. And later today we will talk about the the tools. And now we'll talk about tools. Uh, how much time do I still have? This is 2.35, so I have about 10 minutes. Okay, cool. So let's, let's, uh, let's talk about tools. Eh? Um, maybe you will, would like to question my chat. What, how do you, you know, investigate when you have something? First, when you receive anything, you challenge. So that's why logic is important. Myself, with my team, we always sit down and challenge, and nobody is correct. 
uh, nobody is uh, inherently correct. Um, even as team leader, they can question me on my idea, on my reasoning. And yeah, it, sometimes I'm wrong too. They were correct. So whenever they are correct, so they will buy me lunch. Whenever I am correct, they'll buy me lunch too. So fair. It's a fair deal. So yeah. Um, so sources, eh? so when you talk about online tools, um, may, in other courses, I would list the tools for you, but since you are educators, I will show you the databases. Where are the databases for online tools? We have number one, OSIN Essentials. OSIN Essentials um, gives you this. Uh, this is the, 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 the way how, this is how the display of the website, I will show you, this is the, 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 the full website there. Yeah? So you can scroll down and you can look at the verification tools and services that they have listed here and you can use them. You can use them, okay? It is direct link to the, to the website. So you can uh, just click and you get there and we'll do it, we'll do it later yeah, together. So that's one. Angkat semua dah kering. Apa dia? Apa yang Oh, sorry. sorry. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so, sorry. I thought you were talking to me. Sorry. Okay. So, number two is first draft. Okay, first draft also had uh, have posted their uh, toolkit online. Uh, let's take a look at it. Uh, where's my first draft? Okay, here. Yeah. So, this is my first, this is the first draft tool. Similar to, um, OSIN, uh, similar to, uh, Austin Essentials, they if they also list and in this in this particular case they even give you some guide how to use the dashboard. You know, it helps you and they also uh, link you to resources like databases that they have, for example, elections and blah blah blah, COVID nineteen databases. So these are all things that can help you in your fact checking processes. Okay. And let's take this and put it on the side for a while. And the third one I would like to share with you is this, Bellingcat. Bellingcat listed their tool, but in a different way. They don't put it online as in a website, but they put it in a Google spreadsheet. You know? um, I think because, because last time they used Microsoft, uh, sorry, they used Google Doc, Google document, but I don't think it, helps them because maybe they have a lot of things. You see, if you look at the link here, they have, for example, for image alone, they have list about, listed about 23 uh, tools talking about uh, uh, helping you on um, image alone. So I don't think it is uh, feasible for them to put in a website. So they just put it in here. And I think it's easier for them to amend whenever necessary because Talking about online tool because it's uh, open source. Uh, sometimes uh, it get obsolete. Sometimes we, I even had uh, an experience. I I used a tool one day and the day after I cannot use it anymore uh, for many reasons. Maybe for example uh, the this change in algorithm. Maybe the creator of the source, um, you know, closed it or anything because it's free. You see, so it. It is. It can be used, but yeah, sometimes it's not that secure. You cannot hold to only one database or only one tool. So you have to know multiple tools to do similar thing. Like what? Like this. Okay, uh, let's try and do uh, three. Uh, I will show you three exercises. So you, don't, so you don't have to do it. So you can see how I do it. So it helps you to understand a little better because if not, it will take some time. It will take a lot of time for us to communicate, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and I don't think everyone uh, would like to you not know, drag this session for too long. So we'll do three, we will do three uh, exercises. Number one, reverse image. Number two, uh, website history. And number three, and website authority. Uh, reverse image, um, let's do this, yeah. Okay, give me a moment. I need to rearrange my, okay. So for reverse image, we can use, uh, let's, there are two tools that I will suggest you. Number one is Google image search. And number two is Yandex image search. Uh, 
Um, I personally like Yandex better um, because they, 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 the, the, the tool is more accurate in many ways. Um, but Google is also good because it gives you a good um, idea on, on general thing, you know, for example, like let's try this. Eh? How do you use it? You see, you open images.google.com, then you see this uh, camera icon over here, click on it. You can choose either you want to push the URL or you can upload the photo. Um, normally you receive things on your phone, so I will just upload an image. So rather that you can also drag the, the photo. So what we'll do is we will um, we will search for this uh, sorry for for the photo of Mr of this article. See? Um, so what will happen? Eh? We will put this photo inside Google, Google image search. So we'll put it here, drop it, and we we'll see what happened to Google image. Say this is something about Google. They they have to go general. So in the photo, you can see a guy wearing suit. So the first search that they look for is suit. So maybe uh, and you can see that all the all the relevant searches that they manage, that they refer to. Let me just enlarge this. Okay. So all the images that they refer to is all men wearing suits. And later, uh, later, and uh, in the search uh, result, you can see articles. So, and some of them is relevant to the content, and one of it is similar and uh, is uh, totally exactly the same with the same title. We don't want to prolong MCO, so the the the, the picture is also we do not want to prolong MCO. So there is that. So in order for you to do a better search, you might want to change the, the keyword. So maybe you say COVID-19, let's see, does it help? So mm, yeah, now you can start seeing um, um, Google relating this photo to other photo of uh, Dr. Nui Sham. So, only with similar help, some certain help, then Google can work quite well. Let's do the same, uh, the same photo on Yandex. So just open yandex.ru because it is from Russia. Okay. Similar, you have a photo, uh, camera icon, click on it. You take a photo, drag on it. And then let's see, what can we find? So Yandex straight away help you in multiple ways. Number one, it detects uh, Tansi Dr. Nuhisham face straight away. Number two, it helps to uh, uh, identify the text in the photo, you see? In, in Google, you don't have this feature, but in Yandex, you do have. It. And then number three, it gives you some link to the article that this uh, this uh, that Yandex belief related uh, related to the photo, but in this particular case, uh, this uh, two article is not uh, is not the article that we want to look for. So that is that. That's how things help. Um, one thing. Uh, let's try to do another photo. This is a photo um, of uh, of an unknown. Yes. You have like one minute to. I'm dead. I'm dead. Okay, cool. <laughs> so <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, so sorry to remind don't you. worry, don't worry, don't worry. Thank you so much. Um, let's do this later if we have time. So let me go to the uh, website history. It's very easy. Um, there's one website called Wayback Machine, where you can basically put any website URL or website um, address. And it will help you to look at the history of the website. For example, do you all, we all know that Utusan was shut down for a while and it reopened by a different company. So how do you want, where do you want to look for all Utusan uh, website look? So let's go for utusan.my, right? Is it utusan.my? Oh no, uh, wait, wait, wait. 
utusan.com.my Okay, so we do have, we have, we have history of screenshots on utusan.com.my as far as 1998. So let, let's look at how Utusan looked like in, um, in 1998. In January 11, 1998, this is how Utusan website looked. Uh, internet, help me make it faster. So this is how it looks. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Okay, this is how Utusan website looked like in 1999, in 1998, sorry. And how does it look, uh, say, in 2017? So this is how you look for um, the differences with uh, being organized by website. So this is how it look in 2017 and as early and, and you can go along with it. Like, eh? Because one more thing I want to show you is uh, the last one is, oops, sorry. Uh, looking for website authority is using by using uh, who is who is search okay if you found a web if you stumble upon a website and you want to know the, the is is it legit normally you look at how long it has been around so for example say let's go for banama how long has banama website been around so who is helps you to look at the background of the of the website you can look at the legit who the owner of the of the of the of the, of the domain Say important dates registered on 1997, first of uh, sorry, 16th of January. So 1997 until 2021, I think it's quite legit, right? Because it has been there for a long time. So and people keep on renewing the the, the domain. So um, if you use a dot my, uh, you can you need to use. Um, a different one that is uh, my nick who is and for example my chat dot my so from here you can see my website oh sorry yeah my chat my chat so tak tak jadi pula nanti I show you later lah eh because time is not very to masa masa nak cepat dia jadi macam macam i think that's all i can sh i can share with you if you want to speak and want to talk later this is my email uh, feel free to drop by we can talk about um, you know many things uh, anything under the sun in fact even for a cup of tea so thank you so much jay over to you thank you so much okay all right thank you very much mr imran because you know so informative the presentation is very informative and oh before i you know mecece pasal apa yang mr imran cakap tadi we, i would like to uh, invite you all to our next speaker okay drum roll please okay okay no need, no need. <laughs> okay um our next speaker will be uh, associate professor dr emma mirzawati muhammad aka dr emma okay she will be uh, talking about producing media content for assignments, creative module for university students. Oh, before that, before that, I would like to, you know, give some brief biography about her. Okay, um, Dr. Emma has 16 years of experience as an academic and a, and a health communication researcher. She is, pas 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 she is passionate about exploring ways for communication to be utilized as tools to nurture positive health behavior and strongly believe in the importance of health literacy to empower society in making informed health decisions. She is currently researching communication strategy for COVID-19 and Nolesi Malaria in Malaysia, where she worked closely with UNICEF and the Ministry of Health to design effective behavior intervention. Okay. Dr. Emma leads numerous research grants in the past and currently leading an international grant from UNICEF Malaysia and the Ministry of Higher Education LRGS grant. She is also the director at the UKM's UNICEF Communication for Development Center in Health, also known, also known as Health, Health.com. Dr. Emma keeps an 
active lifestyle where she enjoy road running, trail running and mountain hiking in her spare time. Okay, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I handed this session to Associate Professor Dr. Emma Mirzawati Muhammad, aka Dr. Emma, to deliver his content. Over to you, Dr. Emma. Thank you very much, Dr. J. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I hope uh, all of you are still awake. Um, usually, the session after lunch is the hardest session, and uh, mine is the last session. So how I would like to conduct this session is uh, by having interactive um, activities. So everybody, I hope that you all are, um, uh, are ready because what we will do uh, now is just play games. Okay, so I will um, actually introduce to you all a few games uh, that it's related to media and information literacy. Are you able to see my screen now? Um, and uh, the uh, some of the exercises and the games that is available online um, that is free to use, uh, you can try and adopt and adapt it to your own modules or your own uh, classroom. Or you could try and think about how do you want to design, you know, local content using similar. Um, similar game or similar similar approach. Okay, so without further ado, let's go to our first game. All right, so now um, just uh, just like what uh, uh, Mr. Imran has uh, conducted in the first in the earlier session, where I would like for you guys to use the chat room or uh, you know, un unmute your mic so you can participate in this uh, activity. Uh, so the first game that I would like for us to play is called Factitious. Okay, so Factitious is a game. You guys can see yeah, my screen? Dr. J, you can see my screen, yeah? Yes, yes. Okay, good. All right, so Factitious is a game that's available online that's free to use where um, you could actually test your uh, media information literacy skills or level. Okay, so here they have different kinds of um, facts uh, or uh, news clippings that uh, you can use to try and see whether it is actually fake or it's actually uh, true. Okay, so you can see Factitious has different levels uh, according to different reading levels. Um, so there's the easy one at middle school level, medium one, high school level, hard one, college, we can, which we can use with in our students, with our students. And they have a new one, Factitious Pandemic Edition. Okay, so let's try, let's try uh, the Factitious Pandemic um, Edition. Okay, all right. So now I would have to swipe right if it's right and if it's fake. We'll swipe left. Okay, so now let me know whether it's fake or whether it's true. Okay, so round one. Let's read this. NJ woman who gave a fake name and disappeared after testing positive for coronavirus is found. Okay, so a woman with a coronavirus who gave doctors a fake name and address and vanished has been found, authorities said Tuesday. The unidentified woman walked into East Orange General Hospital on Saturday where she was taken tested, which were, where she was then tested for COVID-19, said Newark Mayor Ras Baraka. A positive result was returned. However, she provided a false name and a Newark address. The mayor explained in a Facebook video pleading for information. When city health officials determined she had the illness, they went to the address she provided and discovered that she didn't live there, Baraka said. About two hours after the mayor's appeal, the mystery woman was found. We have located that the woman that was reported to have tested positive for coronavirus, he wrote on Facebook. Thank you everyone for your vigilance. More than 260 people have tested positive for the coronavirus in the state of New Jersey, according to officials. At least 20 of those cases have been in Essex County area. This is from nydailynews.com. Okay, so now let me know. Do you guys think this is 
false or this is true? What do you guys think? Okay, come on, guys. All right. Come on, guys. Give you can okay. you use the chat room or you can unmute your mic. And no worries if you got it, get it wrong. This is just, uh, you know, just a game. And uh, we will collect votes. So how many more votes? We will select that uh, answer. Okay, can uh, you help me read the the knee, oh, Dr. J? Okay, the answers. Dr. Azul said false. Uh, Hazwani said true. Zoom 1 FKP. Usim said false. Okay. Mr. Amri said true. Dr. Jam said false. Uh, Siti Harja, she's not sure, but she chose false. Uh, Aina Nabila, true. Zuliani, false. Dr. Siti Ezalil, true. Dr. Okay, so how, is, how oh, many true, uh, how many, many false? Okay. Oh, my. <laughs> okay, did, did, we, did we get more true or do we get more false? I think uh, true. More oh, false. False? Is, uh, I think more false. Hey, more but, false. Uh, yeah. More false. One, two, three. It's uh, it's overlapping. Like true, false, true, false, true, false. It's like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait. Um. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I think there's a more uh false than true. More false. Okay. Yeah. Let's swipe left then. Let's see. Oh, it's correct, incorrect, it's guys. Incorrect. It's actually true. All right. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. So actually, NY Daily News uh, is actually a, uh, a a real newspaper, although it has the lower standards for accuracy. However, the story is true. Okay. So it's actually it's something that it looks like uh, you know it's it's very light journalism there but it is a true story so sometimes you know um correct news or real news can be also misinterpreted and you know uh, can be seen as false news so we have to also be uh, aware of that as well okay so let's try another one okay bill and melinda gates foundation and others predicted up to 65 million death via coronavirus in simulation ran three months ago okay so the foundation who owns the virus pattern is funding for research for vaccine to stop it from spreading um before the outbreak the bill and melinda gates foundation the, the john hopkins bloomberg school of public health and the world economic forum co-hosted an event in new york where policymakers uh, business leaders and health officials work together on a simulated coronavirus outbreak okay so this is from infowars.com okay what do you guys think just let us know in the chat box if you think it is, is true or this is false. Okay, false. The the one Anita, false. Okay. Uh, false, false. Two false, false, three false. Three false. False, okay, five false. One true. We have one true. Okay. What, two true. Two true. Uh, come on, guys. Come on, guys. More answers, please. True. Three true. Five false. Looks like more false. Okay. Uh, let's no, no. Go. Actually, it's four. Four true is coming. So they still undecided. Okay. Is that true? Or One is more. It false, true. Guys? So it's five on five. It's five on five. Five true. <laughs> five false. Okay. Six true. Five false. Six true. Five false. Come on, okay. guys. Yeah, okay. Let's All right, so more, more true? More true than false. More true than false. Okay, oh. let's see whether let's the see true answer. actually wins. No. no, no, guys, it's actually fake. Okay, so, so to those who answered false, you guys are correct. All right, so actually, 
that was a fake article. Infowars is a um, platform that is run by somebody who, who specializes in fake and antagonistic rumors and fabrications. Okay. So there are people out there who their mission is to actually spread lies and create, you know, wrong information just to confuse and complicate uh, a situation for people, you know, uh, to, to, I mean, people like us, uh, we are all academicians, but we can, we can also be, you know, um, confused by, by this, by this news. Okay. So don't worry. Um, you've got two falls as a group. Don't worry, we'll try another one. We'll see whether we get uh, better this time around. Okay, is this man behind the cor global coronavirus pandemic? Okay, in light of growing speculation, most of it within less than official circles, that the official theory for the spread of coronavirus is because someone ate bad soup at Wuhan seafood and animal market is a fabricated farce. Okay, so it says here in the news that Wuhan, uh, I mean, um, COVID-19 did not actually came from uh, the bat zoo, but actually came from a lab who actually genetically uh, made the virus. Okay, is this true or is this false? It's published by zerohedge.com. All right, let's go, guys. What's the answer? True or false? Fake, false. Okay, we have two answers. False, five, five, uh, five false. Five false. Let's go. I need more answers. Come on, false. America and China. Okay, six false. Come on, let's go. Anyone else? Uh, five false. So majority is false. I think majority okay. is false. Majority. All right, let's oh, go. Oh, this one false. true. This one true. One, one true, okay. Let's hope. Let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> so majority says uh, false, yeah? yeah. Okay, let's majority see. Majority false. See. Yes, correct. It's correct. So you guys mm. got your first correct as a group. Yes, so that is a fake article, okay? We all know that um, you know, the... the the, the virus actually originated from China. It's not being made in some lab or something. Um, so you can actually, the, some clues that you can can pick up from this uh, to, to, to see whether it's fake or not, is the first sentence contains 156 words and the author, Tyler Durden, is a character from a movie, Fight Club. Okay, so sometimes people who engineer this this fake news uh purposely just picks up you know um uh, some famous names from a movie character or um somebody from the past or from the history popular you know, from the history just to have fun with it and to see whether you're smart enough or you're alert enough to actually say hey this is this sounds this name sounds familiar it doesn't I don't think this is the real character. You know, this is the real person. So yeah, so sometimes uh, this happens and a quick, uh, you know, uh, telltale is to look for this um, dodgy information or dodgy um, uh, uh, character that is being used in the news, okay? But you guys, congratulations for that. So next one. Unbelievable act of kindness. Okay, so there's a mystery man who actually um, uh, bought a lot of flowers because uh, uh, he just wanted to help this florist. So he bought everything that the florist had left, 10 large bouquets, and delivered it anonymously to the people in town. Okay, so... What do you guys think? Do you think this is a real news or this is fake? So this is published by bostoncbslocal.com. So there's somebody who's so kind enough out there that, you know, bought all the flowers, left flowers in this florist because his economy, um, I mean, his business is not 
uh, is not doing so well. So he was helping out and also cheering other people in the town with surprise uh, delivery of flowers. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think this person exists in the world? Are there, is there still nice people like this person? Ben David? You guys think? This, yes or no? One. So true, too true. Two truths. Okay, more, any more answers? Okay, three true, eh, four true. Oh, okay, okay. so more Five. true. So you guys more believe true. in uh, oh. kindness and, uh, you know, random kindness and um, strangers giving nice things, eh? So Haswani said false. Okay. But majority is true? Majority is true. Six true and one false. All okay. right. That is correct, it's correct, guys. Well done, well done. Okay, so you guys gaining momentum here. So you get this one correct as well. So CBS station in Boston is the credible news source. Okay, it's a real um, uh, TV station. And there are generous people out there, generous strangers out there, okay? All right, so this is, I think, the last one. Um, study investigates if COVID-19 came to Caliph in fall 2019. Okay, so this news says that, again, COVID-19 did not came from China. It actually was detected earlier on before it was detected in Wuhan. It was actually detected in uh, California. Um, where uh, uh, researchers in Stanford who were institute said that um, they actually uh, conducted tests on uh, students there at the campus and they actually detected they are all positive with COVID-19. And this happened before COVID-19 was discovered in Wuhan. And this was published at um, sfgate.com. So what do you guys think? Is this uh, true or this is false? Mm, it could be. Okay, i just let you guys answer it. True or false? One false, false. Uh, more guys, more, come on. What do you guys think? Okay, we have two false, Dr. Emma. Two false, so, okay. Yep. The rest is not, um, maybe, the, okay, we have three, four, five, five falls. Okay, so everybody thinks it's strong, right? Yep. Yes, that's correct. That's okay, correct, yep. so uh, this is, it looks like it's real, right? Because it is, it, the source came from a professor, a professor in Stanford University, nonetheless, you know? <laughs> um, so he, but, Actually, if you investigate further, the professor, Victor David Hansen, is actually an expert in military history. Has mm. nothing to do with biology, has nothing to do with you know, public health, epidemics. So he's hardly an expert to be quoted and to be trusted in this false story. So you can also see this happening in our uh, um, media landscape uh, where journalists just you know, tangkap muat, just interview the first person that they know, as long as this person is a professor or, you know, somebody that is seen um, credible to give, uh, uh, you know, quotations to, to give uh, um, their, uh, their opinions on it, they would just, you know, just quote, quote this person because it's the easiest source to find. And sometimes if that comes from a reputable news agency, then people, you know, once, once they read it, people will think that it is true, right? Uh, and it would definitely make a buyer's uh, opinion um, for the readers. So this is something that we also need to be careful uh, in, in, in journalism because it might come from a reputable source but the way it is being uh, quoted, uh, you know, the sources that they use might not be the best sources uh, in that particular uh, aspect. Okay, 
So congratulations, guys. So you've got three rights and two wrong. So well done. Okay. Well done. Congratulations. Okay, let's let's go back to our PowerPoint. Okay, so that is game one, fictitious, all right? So as you can see, there is you know some games out there that you can play with your students using um, similar uh, similar approach. It's, it's like gamification. You're, you're you're doing like a game. You're hosting a game. And you get the students to be excited. Uh, put their you know uh, put their opinions on the chat box and try to get them to um, to guess and 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 also do you know some fact checking in between. Okay. So now that is individual as a class activity. So now what I will do is I'm gonna break you guys into smaller groups. Yeah. So in this in this uh, activity, we will do a competition, okay, among the groups. Uh, so what you will do is we will play a game called Troll Factory. Okay. So Troll Factory is a simulation of social media. Okay, it's a social media simulation where you, as the player, have to figure out how to make a content viral. Okay, so the aim is to make it viral. So they will give you choices of uh, pictures, of uh, you know, um, tweets, or um, things that you want to post on social media. And you as a group, you guys discuss and you decide, okay? So the aim is to get as much likes and as much shares as possible, okay? And then we will come back to the main room and we will share who, you know, everybody's result, every group's result, and we will see who actually wins this competition, okay? So remember, the aim is to get as much likes and as much shares by thinking strategically how to make the message viral okay all right so now what i will do is i will um sorry uh okay so this i'm just gonna show you uh what it looks like here okay so this is the troll factory i'm just gonna copy the link i'm gonna put it in the chat room now so, uh, so you guys can copy this or you can access this, click on the link uh, and then I will separate you guys into smaller group, okay? Um, can I get, okay, all right. So we have around how many, 28. So I'm gonna break you guys into five rooms. Okay, five rooms and I'll, uh, assign automatically okay i'm opening all the rooms now and then just go on the link one of you guys share this your screen to the group and then you all can decide as a group together okay all the best amri uh, Naja, Dr. Wananita, Dr. Izalayla. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we have somebody from my chat, is it Susie? Do you want to go, go in and uh, participate as well? Please do. Erwan? Rushdi. Okay. 
Aisha? Ya, yes, saya tertendang keluar. Tertendang, kayaknya dekat dalam guru mana Aisha? Empat kot tadi. So, dengan siapa? Like, dengan Dr. Jam. Dr. Jam, okay. Yep. Alright, I'll send you back there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Muhammad Dinul. Najah. Uh, Siti Nur Iziandi. Aina. Can you all go to your room? Siti Hajar. Naja. Ella. Hazwani, terkeluar ke? Sorry, terkeluar. Haa, uh -huh. jadi daripada grup mana? Uh, Amri dengan... Okay. Amri, okey. Ya, yeah, eh. Sorry. Send you back. Ella, Siti Hajar, Dinul, Najah.
Hello, anybody else uh, don't have any group want to go to your breakout room? Fazura, you're not in any room. What about the rest? Uh, my team, we, we have done. You're done, okay. Yeah, we're done. What room was that? Huh? Uh, Aisha, what room was Group four. Four, yeah. Four. Sorry. Oh, okay. So, okay. So, yeah. No wonder you guys are back. All right. Yeah, because so just I. Just wait for the rest of the group to come back then. But this time uh, around, Emma, because I wasn't the one doing it, watching somebody doing it. Uh -huh. I think, I, think uh, I learned a lot more because the first time mm -hmm. I, was, I was a virgin as usual. So I just <laughs> click, 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 you know, without really understanding what you were supposed, you know, to do. Now I thought, really? oh, this is about thinking. This is about, oh, okay, okay, you know, how to make it more, you know, uh, kind of viral and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. So I think the second time is always better than the first time. <laughs> I hope you got better, better shares and better likes. Are you? <laughs> no, no, not really. Not really. Not really. Still, still <laughs> not. But that's not my fault. This time somebody else's fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just wait. Let me just go into the room and see yeah. how they're doing. Okay, so group five is also almost done. Let's see group two.
Okay. So everybody's back except for room two. They're still playing. But let's just share uh, what have you guys got? Room one, uh, how much likes and how much shares did you guys get? Um, room one, we are not so lucky. We're not so bad. Lah, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so we... We, not so lucky as the first time, Imran. Uh, the, 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 the previous session, I was better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's so, your score? 5536 five, shares and 24 followers. 5536? Five, five, yes. Mm. Shares and? 54. 54? 334 followers. 334 followers. Okay, great. Okay, room 4. Naughty lah, not bad. Naughty <laughs> je. Room 4, with uh, those with Dr. Jam just now, how many of you guys got, how many shares and how many followers? Hey, how many likes is it? Those who with Dr. Jam just now. Room 5, room 5. Room 5. Room 5, Dr. Jam. Aisha, you get there. 6,000 six eight three two share eight three two okay uh two six three followers two six three followers okay so all right uh and group five group with data zone <laughs> share uh seven two one one seven two one one okay uh follower five eight one five eight oh okay <laughs> so the room five is leading at this moment, uh, so let's 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 just uh, um, call back those in room two and see um, how many shares did they like. Doctor Azul, you keep bad companies. <laughs> okay, so how do you guys feel playing that game? I feel bad. You feel like a bad guy. Mm. You guys yeah. feel like a bad guy. <laughs> um, yeah. So actually, what what this game um, taught you, not just you know have fun and knowing how to make a thing viral, is actually teaching all of us uh, that there's strategy behind you know making a content viral, uh, choosing the right words to use, choosing the right pictures to post choosing which social media to, to broadcast your message. Everything is carefully planned by this, uh, you know, this uh, content curator and those who, who <laughs> intends to spread uh, misinformation and disinformation to the world. So it is something not just, you know, people who created this false information, it's not something they just created suka suka you know some of them are really doing it like because they can make they can attract uh, people to their their sites they can generate actually generate money from advertisement for you know um with all these clickbaits um but these are the things that actually uh contains misinformation and disinformation so, oh, so team two is back. How many um, did you guys get? Did you guys get to finish it? Group, Dr. Aja. Group Aja and siapa tadi? Tak sempat habis tadi. Ah, tak sempat habis. Okay, tak sempat habis. Uh, okay, so juaranya, so the winner goes to group number five, those who are in the same group as Dr. Azul. So you guys won the Troll Award. So you guys are the, 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 the people who can make things viral. Okay, congratulations. <laughs> they are trollers. Queen. They are trollers. Oh, oh. oh my trolls. God. Guys. They are <laughs> trollers. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, all right, so back to our PowerPoint. Okay, so that is another way of us to use game, a platform that is already available on the internet to 
uh, to use it in our class to make it fun, but there is still learning, um, uh, you know, at the end of the activity. Uh, so next one that I wanted to share with you guys is this, um, this strategy uh, for someone to actually spot a fake news uh, to, to, to sort of uh, distinguish whether um, it's false information or it is, uh, you know, correct information. So I took this from Newseum. Uh, Newseum is a great platform where uh, educators like us can access and find different kinds of templates of activities that we can use in our class to teach information and media literacy. And their um, materials catered to different age groups from those in, uh, in a school arena, primary school, high school, and also the more mature uh, um, audiences. So as educators, you guys can just log on to museum, register, it's free, and then you guys can access all the kinds of um, you know, uh, modules that's available on there that you guys can use in your classes. The only, um, uh, the only disadvantage of using a museum is that uh, uh, the materials are very Western, are very American content, um, uh, based content. So you won't find the more Asian, more you know, Malaysian punya content. So what I can advise you guys is that you can go to their, their, their news, uh, their, their site and then learn how they do their activities, copy their activity sheets and things like that, and try and implement that in, in, in our local context and our local language. Okay, so um, this is one uh, activity that uh, I took from a museum, it's called Escape Junk News. Okay, so they, they suggested um, the way to escape from junk news is to use E-S-C-A-P-E to identify, uh, to, to see whether the news is uh, um, false news or not, uh, or correct news. So first E is evidence. So does the fact holds up? Uh, is it the, re you know, they are, are they using the real facts? Are they using the real statistics? Look at the names, the numbers, the place, the documents, okay? As looking at sources, okay, who actually made this content? Can I trust them? Is this the platform that can uh, from a mainstream media, or is this some just some platform that you don't even know who's the creator? Okay. C is context. What is the bigger picture? Is the content in relation to you know the the the, the recent election that is just you know uh, happening or the election is coming ar ar um, around the corner is this uh, in context of this um, uh, um, uh, a, a new drama that just came out uh, is this uh, in the context is uh, there's two celebrities trying to fight for custody of their child so you need to have context when you read the, this uh, news so that you understand actually what's the bigger picture here. A is the audience. Okay, looking at uh, who is the intended audience. I think we all are familiar with this, looking at the language, the content, what are the image choices, the all media uh, educators, we all understand the importance of audience in creating a co uh, content. Look at purpose. You have to understand why was this made? You have to question uh, yourself. Uh, look for clues uh, in terms of motivation. What is the publisher's mission? Is there any uh, money-making tactics involved in the messaging? Okay. Uh, e is execution. So how is the information is being presented? Look at typo errors. To look at the image choices. Um, look at the placement and the layout. So we have to be aware of all this when we try to look at, uh, you know, when we try to read news and, 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 and um, filter information. Okay, so this news, um, so I'm just gonna, uh, let's just play this as a group uh, very quickly. Um, so I'm just gonna enter this and we will see. Okay, so this is a news. 
All right. So this is the news. Giant python attacks Indonesian man before being eaten. Okay. So that's the picture. And that's a 7.8 meter python, which was killed after it tried to attack an Indonesian man, uh, nearly severing his arm at Sumatra Island. Okay, so let's read. A giant python attacked an Indonesian man, nearly severing his arm before hungry villagers chopped up the reptile and ate it, at a, a police chief said Wednesday. Security guard Robert Nabahan crossed paths with a giant creature while patrolling an oil palm plantation in a remote Batang Gansal subdistrict of Sumatra Island on Saturday. The python was 7.8 meters long and it was unbelievably huge. Local police chief Sutajra, who like many Indonesians only have one name, told, ATF, uh, told AFP. Sutajra so said the 37-year-old uh, Nabahan, who sometimes like to eat snake, tried to catch the giant python and stuff it in a gunny sack. But the huge serpent fought back and bit his arm on his left arm, nearly severing it from his, severing it from his body. Nabahan was then rushed to hospital in a neighboring, neighboring town for treatment. The police chief said the intervention of another security guard and several local residents whom one hit the snake with a log helped save the man's life. Okay, So hungry locals later, later killed the snake and displayed its body in the village before dicing it and frying it up and feasting on it. Okay, so your first impression of this news, what do you guys think? Let's look at the escape. Okay, let's look at escape. So escape means evidence. So does the fact hold up? So let's check whether if you guys, any, anybody of you guys want to check, let me just put the link uh, in the chat room so you guys can also, um, also access it. Okay. Okay, I think for the for, uh, in the interest of time, we we probably just go straight to uh, understanding how we want to use this. Huh? Okay, all right. So, uh, so what we can do is in our class is using escape and try to get our students to actually put down. Okay, what is the E? What is the S? What is the C? A, P, and E when looking at you know a, a news. So from this activity, you guys can then do a late, uh, more in-depth uh, discussion okay, uh, on how using escape can actually help us as a reader to see whether a news is actually false or is true. Okay, so for your information, this news is actually true. This is the real story. Uh, and the Python is that big, huge, is that long. And uh, you know, um, there are people in Indonesia actually eat uh, Python um, as, as uh, you know, as, as, their, as their food, okay? All right, so now I want to move on to actually a very important part is how do you want to create modules, okay? Um, we have played several games uh, in, in this session. And although it's fun, we need to be thinking about, you know, how do we want to uh, uh, maximize learning from these activities? So you want to first look at, you know, what are the learning outcomes from, you know, doing uh, specific games or specific activities? You must make sure that the learning outcomes are measurable. Okay, the words like to understand cannot be measured. Okay, you must be able to measure, like for example, students' ability to do this, this, this. Okay, so that is more measurable learning outcomes that you can test later in your exams or in your assignments or you know in your quizzes. Okay, so always remember that, that when you put a learning outcome, it must be measurable. Okay, then you have to plan the lesson plan itself. You know how how long does the activity uh, will take us to do. 
what kind of material that we need to prepare before we do the activity, what kind of pre other preparations that needs to be done, you know, how do we do it? What are the things we need to discuss after we have played the game? And after that, we have to also think about what are the assessments that we can do to assess all this, uh, you know, uh, what, what are the learnings from this module or this activity, okay? So an example using the escape jump news is that the learning outcome is students are able to demonstrate the use of ESCAPE to critically analyze information in the media. Okay, that's, that's what we want at the end. So the lesson plan is that game might take around 30 to 60 minutes, depend how are you going to conduct it. Maybe it's in a group or you want it to do it like a class activities, you, you, you can play around with that. Um, so the materials, what do you need? Maybe you need to portray this poster here. You need to print out worksheet if you're doing it face to face. Um, you know, uh, uh, and you have to pick a news stories or several news stories that the students can use to evaluate uh, uh, during the session. And if you're doing it online, obviously you need to have internet access, okay? And you have to prepare as well, what are the preparation that needs to be done, like the poster, the, the uh, you know, the workshop, um, and then you need to also read up uh, on the activity so that it's, you know, you're, you're more uh, clear and makes your presentation more, uh, you know, smoothly. Then you have to look at the do's. Okay, how are, the, how are we going to do this? Okay, first, you have to introduce escape as a concept. Second, you have to go through this, this concept and ask the students to help you define each of the concepts. Then you divide uh, two groups if you want to do a small groups um, uh, discussion. And then get them to, uh, to probably just take one of the escape concept and try to find out and come back to the main group and try and present it. You can do that uh, as the activity. Um, and then discuss, okay, after all the students have actually presented, how do you want to discuss escape uh, that, uh, you know, from one escape, it's not just a concept, how do you want to uh, make it uh, um, part of your whole learning on MIL, okay? Which concept is the most uh, helpful for you to figure out that this news is, is correct, is uh, false or not, okay? What are the most uh, the concepts that is harder for us to understand? And why do you think that is? You know, and did you feel you had the time, enough time to apply this concept in the story? Uh, how do you want to actually speed up if, it, if this is a real thing or the real, real situation where you need to actually fact check immediately, okay? And then obviously you have to plan for assessment, whether it's an assignment, if it's a quiz or examination at the end, okay? So that is basically, uh, you know, my uh, sharing session for today. So I would just like to leave you guys with this question. Uh, after going through, you know, uh, Imran's session and my session, now we want to think about, you know, how would you want to create creative, uh, you know, content uh, to create, you know, media information literacy modules in your class uh, at your respective universities. Okay, thank you very much. Um, everybody for a wonderful participation and over back to you dr j okay thank you very much dr emma for your lengthy explanations on on apa, on apa, on the apa, on the creative modules and everything okay i would like or okay now i would like to open the floor for any questions or inquiry or opinion that you would like to express or you would like to ask uh apa, Mr. Imran or Dr. Emma, uh, the floor is open. You can ask anything. <clears throat> okay, Imran, are you are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. It's yeah. just um, I'm. Okay. I have uh, closed the the video. Okay, we ju we uh. just wait for some of the question from our you know participants today. Okay, we're more than happy, okay. more than happy to answer anything. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, any question, guys, from you guys? Dr. Yeah, Dr. I think, uh, um, you know, anybody of you guys want to ask questions about my chat, yeah. I think it's very interesting that we get an industry or, you know, yes. somebody who's actually uh. doing it on, the, on a daily basis. You guys want to yep. ask uh, Imran? Yep. Mm. I think a lot of questions would be really uh, wonderful learning. Assalamualaikum. Yes, uh, yes Dr. Azul. Azul, okay. 
uh, I would like to ask uh, Cik Ali Imran about the uh, my check uh, portal. I think portal or web. Uh, did, did you use uh, or integrate your uh, architecture uh, to develop your my check with uh, artificial intelligence uh, technique or etc. to to make it easier for you to what we call is uh, to uh, analyze or evaluate the fake, uh, fake news on Yep. Or false information. Yep. But, or you have a, a team in uh, artificial intelligence in your or your team or your group members. Eh? That, that, that's my question. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Azul. Um, on AI, um, we have not embarked into any AI effort yet. We are still uh, a team of four. Uh, working on investigations using um, tools, uh, invest uh, uh, online tools. Um, maybe if one day somebody will, you know, if, if there's anyone going into AI on fact check, <clears throat> hopefully we can embark on that. But by far, no, not at, at least not in Malaysia. I'm not. I'm not sure if somewhere else they have done it. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. Dr. Azul, any question from Dr. Azul? More? No? Yeah, I think AI, you know, AI involvement to, you know, to to be used or to identify fake news is really important, especially where the one that you, you know, scribble with words and everything. That, that currently you can use human humanistic approach to identify that. I think, you know, in the future, maybe we can incorporate AI. To identify, you know, fabricated news. Okay. Any other question to Dr. Emma, maybe? Uh, Just wanted to add on, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Azul's question. I think it's a very, I think it's the future actually. If we work, if we can work towards, you know, um, integrating uh, AI into uh, fact checking. Um, because uh, I mean, the, the machine can learn, you know, what kind of uh, languages that um, at least they can detect if there's there's typo errors, they can immediately detect, you know, or, or uh, using of names from a movie character, they can definitely detect that. Um, but I think uh, what the machine would have some challenge to detect is. Um, if if it's used, uh, uh, if the the wording are used um, as a sarcasm, because sometimes if you use sarcasm, a machine cannot differentiate whether you're making a joke or you actually, you know, um, using it uh, to 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 state a fact. So I think that is a tricky area that needs some exploration by data scientists. But yeah, I think it's definitely the future because we can't just be relying on humans to do fact checking, right? If we can get it automated, it'd be wonderful. Is uh, we need we need uh, integrated uh, human and machine because we cannot rely on machine too. Okay, <laughs> I agree with the yeah. yeah. uh, On top, uh, on top human of touch. what uh, Doctor Azul and Doctor Emma said, I do know that there's an application or there's an AI feature to write an article. Yeah, mm. they they have they have been it has been used. You know, uh, I think, there's I think it's, it's going on. on. I think yeah. it's on now we have um uh, bot as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, but 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 I think I have to sort of uh, comment on Dr. Emma's state, statement as well. To a certain extent, it's correct, but machine learning has a lot of limitation. And one of them is because uh, it relies on algorithm that is written by human beings. And human beings are cultured and culture changes over time. So in the sense that you cannot keep writing the algorithm for the machine, 
to to keep working on it. So it, uh, at the end of the day, it's still about us uh, valuing uh, we as consumers. Uh, you know what value we have. Uh, about certain news, you know, certain news might be very serious, but don't, some people don't care about it. Some, you know, some some just go for certain uh, and news for whatever they feel they need to listen to. Uh, but but I think uh, you are right in the sense that you know uh, the uh, computer scientists has uh, a lot more to do, and one of them is to understand the working of culture and. Uh, each culture of each country is different. So it's very difficult when you have to write the algorithm, understanding that different uh, culture has different values, different understanding of what's real, what's not, what's valuable and what not as well. So I think, I think you know, uh, I think that's the reality so far about machine learning, you know. Um, but I have, I have a question to both because I thought Jay would read it, uh, but I have a oh, question. Yeah, to both uh, Dr. Emma and uh, Mr. Imran. Um, uh, because I, I come across the theory that says uh, news, like many other consumer products, is a business of desire, right? Like film is a business of desire. It sells something to satiate our desire so that we feel happy, you know, it's like users and gratification. We use it, uh, then you feel gratified, then you keep repeating it. So that's the reason why clip clickbait is really, really, you know, mushrooming because it clicks something in us, you know. So it sells something um, because this is something that we want to happen. You know, we we choose something because this makes us happy. I think for that reason, people are also gravitated towards information disorder as it is more satisfying to their desire for something to happen uh, according to what they want. For example, uh, okay, they would say yes, because in them, they have this anti-establishment or they want to believe in conspiracy. So they, they believe in it because it fulfills their desire uh, for that, that particular news, whether it's false or not, it fulfills their desire. So these types of news are more entertaining usually and gratifying to their wants, eh? not their needs, but their wants. So what do you both think of this perspective or this theorization, you know, because it involves our understanding of uh, information disorder as, uh, because people gravitate towards something that would satisfy them, you know, uh, something like that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Jam. Okay. Um, I agree. Actually, I think that is why uh, clickbait is so popular and it becomes, you know, more, um, more, <laughs> clickable rather than other news items uh, because people are attracted to it because people want to read you know sensational news they want to know you know what's in because they fear of missing out you know um, and then they want to be updated with the latest gossip with the latest conspiracy with the latest you know um, uh, things that is uh, controversial in, 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 in many situations. But what I, I think the effect of that is more severe in a sense that uh, coming back to AI and algorithm, uh, because once uh, the computer, um, the machine actually learns, the internet learns your behavior. Like for example, you like to click on anti-vaccination messages you will then realize sooner or later your social media feed is full of uh, you know um, anti-vaxxers messaging it's like when you think about buying a vacuum cleaner and then suddenly all the advertisements on vacuum cleaner comes out on your social media I don't know how they read your brain or how they picked up that. I have no idea. But this is what machine is, algorithm is, uh, is today. And it is very scary because what it does is it, it widens the polarization of people. Um, that is why we see, uh, you know, in the, not this, not the recent election, but the previous one, uh, the American election where Donald Trump won is because of he played 
uh, all this uh, algorithm in his campaign. So people are polarized more than ever because whoever are Democrats, they are only getting Democrats, pro-Democrats messages. And those who are uh, Republicans, they are only getting the pro-Republicans messages. And we are actually seeing that happening in our in our society as well. If you are uh, pro amno you're only getting you know pro amno messages. If you pro bosatu, you get pro bosatu messages more than other messages. It's just that maybe our political party are not gung ho with the uh, the political campaign online, not 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 as gung ho as Donald Trump. But this is the most worrying part because we are seeing this impact of what algorithm does to society. Um, and if, if coming back, I mean, coming back to fake news, if somebody actually believes in, for example, anti-vaccination messages, they will keep on getting all these anti-vax messages and they will then be always persuaded to not take vaccination. So, this is something worrying, especially in, in my area, health communication, because in health communication, there is, there is a wrong and there is a right. Uh, is, so, and, and it has an impact on people's health and public's health. So it, it can be very dangerous. I mean, if, if we, we can't control this. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Jen, for that question. So Emma, in the sense that, like, say, if you are anti-vaccine, so you are being fed, you know, keep your 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 screen will be bombarded with anti-vaccine news. You know, eventually yes. it, it becomes a reality in itself, right? Exactly. So, yeah, so I, it's I think, and, and, true. Yeah, yeah and, and and it fits into your curiosity, the the you know the desire, you know, it's like exactly. I I want to believe that this is true, that vaccine is bad. So and all the news that came to me. Are, are reaffirming that particular belief. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Yep, so, correct. Uh, or in fact, check what about <clears throat> fact check takes on that. You know. Thank you, Dr. Okay, uh, Dr. Jan. Um, I totally agree in uh, whatever has been answered by Dr. Emma. Um, for me, or as for my check, um, and for even for our in for us in Benama, we have been doing journalism and basically whatever they mentioned by you was totally correct people are you know keen to look at things that is more sensational and you know give them kind of self satisfaction rather than truth so what we do to handle this so we know that truth is less sexy and for my chat we introduce um, a format, a report format that we hope can be easily digestible by uh, anyone. And we call it our, as we call it as a five tier, five tier format, five tier of information format. So what we do we make sure that all of our title, say for example, let's take this one, <clears throat> all of our title is very direct. So you see, you can catch the reader in say what, less than one minute, they will decide. So in less, sorry, in less than one second, they will decide. So in a glance, they read your title and hopefully that alone can get into their, their mind. And um, our title will be direct no clickbait um, that's our first layer of information because we know you know to to battle this is by offering something else that can maybe at least uh, compete the level of happiness or satisfaction to the you know to the other side of the content so we write our article in uh, this format so the first layer is this Second layer is our graphics with the you know Benaka and Hasil box with the meter over here, so it attracts people hopefully. And then we, if you know, if you would like to know more, then you look at our summary of story. You like to know more? I mean, depends on the time that you have and depends on your level of interest on the topic. So 
we catch people as fast as possible to the fact. So we don't drag people to read until at the end of the paragraph, then you will to get the to get the uh, the, the content. So it's just a matter of, of you wanting to know more or not. That's all. So if you want to know more, then you go into our full report. So that's our fourth level, fourth tier of report. And then we, we put it in a way and we write it in a way um santai you know we don't go like you know sekolah menengah punya karangan so we try as much as possible to to make our paragraph short and um maybe maximum of three lines uh, does not exceed four lines so photo um and then um, we put our references down here if the person feel like challenging the level of check that we're doing so that's all. Um, we are trying with this format to get people to participate in our chats. So they, we explain to them what we did and what we found. And hopefully they will be also interested to recheck what we check. And should they have any uh, disagreement and they can contact us, you know, you can, they can contact us if, if, if they feel like um whatever you know say, say say we are doing a mistake or, and we'll be more than happy to discuss or to explain to the person if um we are right or the person is right so i think the approach that we do here is just to to offer something else not to not so much on um stopping them from liking what they already like so hoping by offering more content or this kind of content, they will come some, somehow feel uh, interested and will switch to uh, fact-checking uh, style that we do and they will get um, hopefully writer's information over here. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank okay, you very uh, Thank you. Uh. Thank you, Dr. Imran. Uh, uh, Imran. I think uh, Dr. Imran raised, uh, raised a very interesting uh, point, right? I think that's something that fact-check can, you know, think about in the sense that, you, you know, uh, if, if you keep bombarding people with fact check, I think eventually it becomes part of the, the common practice that we have, the reality, you know. It's just that because you're not playing the game that they're playing, that people think going to fact check is tedious, it's a chore. You, you know what I mean? I mean I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that fact check is not doing the job, but I think uh, in our discussion, we realize that, like Dr. Azul says, you know, algorithm, because uh, these people, they profile us, you know, they profile us. But I think fact check hasn't done the profiling, right? No, no, we have, we have not, we have yeah, not. Maybe, maybe that that's level. part, maybe that's a part that we, we need okay. to, in, in combating that, because we need to create another reality or reality that fact check is a norm as well, rather than just click there. Okay, so I mean, to, to, to answer just, that, to yeah. answer that, Dr. J, uh, the, what we are doing right now is, at this particular level, what my check is doing, we are trying to get our content uh, consistent, and we have started to, talk to Google News Initiative, Asia Pacific, Irene J. We are trying to get um, um, our coding, our back-end coding on our website to be able to speak to Google's coding. So on matters that is checkable or have that, you know, people will question, right? Say people type something, a question on Google box, then our our, our search, our report can come at the top of the finding. So hopefully that can help a um, little bit. Lah. Thank you, Dr. Uh, okay. Mr. Uh, sorry, okay, Dr. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jam, for your questions. And thank you, uh, Mr. Imran, for, for your explanation to the, uh, to the questions. And most importantly, thank you, Associate Professor Dr. Emma, for sharing your information and how to approach, you know, fake news and all of that. Okay, I think we are already reaching our the end of our program. It's